Yo, 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 this is Steve, and we're back with another episode of the Black Superheroes Matter Podcast. Today's guest, we got Samuel Walker. You can follow him at Samuel underscore Walker underscore art on the social nets. Born and raised in Brooklyn, Samuel has been dedicated to the creation of art that reflects both science and social justice perspectives. If you asked him what the subject matter of his work was, he would say black women. If you asked the genre, he would say Afrofuturism. And so let's go down this lovely rabbit hole of Samuel's work, Afrofuturism, and what it means to be a black creator. I wanted to take a break from the episode to let you know that we have some merch that is available. Over at Iltopia Studios, you can find the Black Superheroes Matter art book, which is a collection of illustrations that reimagine your favorite superheroes through the eyes of children of color. We also have a bunch of sticker packs, over 120 different sticker designs of your favorite superheroes. More importantly, we have our Color Me Super coloring book series. Definitely check out the merch at shop.iltopia.com or blacksuperheroesmatter.com. And now back to the episode. Thank you for taking the time to hop on the podcast with me. Um, hopefully everything is going well with you. Uh, how's, how's things been? Uh, with the Corona, COVID-19? Well, just, yeah, the... just with everything, you know, uh, how's, uh, how's just, yeah, how's life been just now that we're in this quarantine situation? Uh, you know, it's, it's been a, a real, uh, existential kind of thing. Uh, I think, uh. It's it's been it's been good in a lot of ways, you know. At least when it comes to time to work on things, which uh, I always felt like was next to impossible. Uh, even though uh, I always believe that uh, time is created, so yeah, you, know, you can always put the time into whatever you want to do. Oh yeah, I mean, I think early on uh, I saw with unfortunately you know projects getting canceled and stuff uh i saw an opportunity to sort of explore things that i've i've always wanted to explore but never really gave myself the permission to and uh and i kind of use that as sort of like a, a creative outlet to just like manage my stress and so uh one of the things that i've been doing is uh learning 3d modeling and animation because uh because i as a creator, I, I've always wanted, I just always had interest oh. in that. And so, uh, and so I kind of, I made use of, I took advantage of those like, uh, online tutorial deals where I got like a, uh, like a master class for like $10 and really sort of like invested in that and, and sort of myself in the time. And so, uh, you know, what you're talking about in terms of having time, finally having time to do what you like want it to do, uh, you know, I think it's definitely one of those uh, silver linings in this situation. Right. And, um, you know, it's great that you're getting into 3D modeling. Uh, you know, it's something I, I've been doing for a few years. And when you really get into it, it's, it's simpler than than you would think it is. Yeah, man. It's just the just the, the really whole just like kind of playing with the like the whole idea of being able to just change a camera angle at, like after the animation is done is just like, it was just, it was just so eye opening for me where I was like, Oh my gosh, I don't have to redraw mm. all of this stuff. All this stuff is done. I just could just move things mm. around now. It's like, where have you been all my life? <laughs> well, uh, I definitely wish you luck on your, when your 3d modeling journey. Oh in yeah. Animation. Yeah. Uh, definitely. Uh, uh, 2d animation is definitely a, a more of a, time consuming kind of kind of thing so yeah and so um what kind of give us a little bit of a a, a synopsis of what do you do as a creator uh so you know i i always try to work uh mixed media and uh you know i always say that overall i feel like i'm a storyteller uh so i i try not to limit myself and what medium i'm trying to tell a specific story in 
but there's always kind of like a, a story in my mind that I'm trying to uh, express in some way. So uh, typically what I, what I, what I do is uh, I, I make comic books and uh, you know, I have a fine arts background. So normally with like uh, the comic book that I might create, I'll make a uh, fine art that goes with it, you know, or paintings or something like that. You know, I try to make 3D models that go with it, like you're saying, um, you know, animations, uh, sometimes video games. So I'm always trying to have a, uh, a broad kind of um, uh, mixed media outlook on whatever it is that I'm creating, you know. So, uh, yeah, I think the overarching thing is would be storyteller. And, you know, uh, just working in different mediums, whatever I can, you know, uh, I think that I would also label myself uh, Afrofuturist, you know, and uh, that being like a kind of very broad uh, subject, but, you know, I feel like I kind of fit into that somehow. Oh, wow. I mean, it's when you talk about mixed media, I instantly think of like, you know, painting like digital different forms of uh like traditional media like uh painting uh ink uh watercolor all that stuff but but as you sort of explained it um 3d modeling video games i mean that that i think that takes it really takes it to a whole nother level and i think that's where uh that's where like we sort of like parallel our sort of interests and in, in approaches because um I've been diving deeper into AR, augmented reality, and uh, I'm, mm. I'm building it all on like the Unity game engine. And so it just gives me opportunities to explore interactivity uh, within world building. And I think as like indie creators and particularly black creators, you know, I think that that's sort of a space that we can op occupy very early on uh, because the accessibility of the tools is just a lot easier now. Yeah, you know, it's definitely uh, a different world. It's very uh, democratizing. Um, a lot of things that f that have been coming out lately, you know, uh, uh, just uh, uh, in every aspect of, you know, what people do, it's so much easier. I mean, you know, if we were to go back 10, 20 years ago, uh, doing uh, animation of any type, you know, was pretty much had a pretty prohibitive level of entry, you know, uh, the cost of programs, you know, I almost always exclusively work with a uh, freeware, you know, nowadays. So, uh, blender or, uh, 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 sketchbook, you know, most of the programs that I use are free and, you know, that's just something people couldn't really do on an indie level a couple of years ago. Yeah. It, it there's always a paywall. Like we weren't at the point where you could where people were doing like the whole subscription thing, but there was always a paywall. And if anybody has ever followed like Adobe's journey or Autodesk, like that's thousands of dollars you have to you have to really invest even to get started. Uh, what was the question? Yeah. So um. So how did how did you get started? Because you mentioned like you know like you're you're using Blender and you're taking this very like multi-pronged approach to storytelling um, with interactivity and, and 3D animation and, and modeling and video games. Like, how did you get started on this journey? Uh, so, I mean, you know, obviously uh, I was drawn since I was young. So, you know, that part of it um, was, was kind of always there. I was lucky that I had a very artistic family and they were very uh, uh, open to whatever I I was doing so you know i think that just from the beginning i always had a kind of kind of a open mindset to learning new things so you know i was always trying to learn something new you know i think even high school i had started you know uh playing music um so really the the journey into like 3d modeling uh actually came from a friend of mine uh mike mike moreno who's a, a great game designer and uh you know he just showed me how how it worked you know he showed me how the basics of like 3D modeling, you know, and then the thing that I, I, I beat myself up years later about was that he showed me Unity. And at the time, I didn't get it. You know, I was kind of like, uh, OK, uh. you know, and uh, 
late years later, I kind of rediscovered Unity. And I was like, wait, Mikey showed me this years ago. And, you know, I just kind of had like a, a light bulb moment where I realized how uh, uh, like awesome of a program it is. And then, you know, I just kind of started going down the rabbit hole of uh, 3D modeling. Um, you know, I think I also have a, a history with um, electrical engineering, which I, I started in, in school. And so that, that kind of comes back to inform, you know, uh, these different levels of kind of just design and engineering, which, uh, you know, I think at the end of the day is, uh, comes back to the overarching thing I'm trying to do, which is like Afrofuturism, which is just, you know, not just about the art and not just about the, the design or creation, but about the, uh, this kind of idea of what to do with those things, you know? Yeah. It's a, I mean, I think your, your unity story is very similar to mine because I downloaded it. I downloaded Unity 2017. No, I downloaded Unity 5 back in 2014. And mm. I I opened it once. I opened it once, saw like the user because you know the use the user interface for like a, a 3D software and Unity, like a game developer software, is not as like is not ve not very easy on the eyes when it's the first thing you see. And so I right. opened it and was like I'd have no idea where to start with this thing. And then I just closed it and I didn't touch it for, I literally didn't touch it for until earlier, early, like at the end of last year when I started getting into uh, AR and, uh, and I started taking like a, like an AR course and they were using unity. So that's when like, I first like really started to dive into it. And so I'm just like really kicking myself in the foot where I could have, I could have, I could be a master at unity right now, but you know, it's just sort of, I had to, there had to be an easier input, uh, input for me. And, uh, you know, it, it's just, you know, seeing, seeing these opportunities and seeing these tools available now, it's just, I, I think that, you know, this is like the perfect time for it, especially during the quarantine and, and, you know, this sort of, uh, shift in, I want to say like a, a shift in industries for a lot of people. It's a, it's a paradigm shift. And, you know, we have an opportunity to, mm. to do a whole lot of different things with, uh, with the tools we have available for free, you know, now. Yeah, definitely. You know, uh, yeah, like you said, um, Unity is definitely a very uh, inti uh, intimidating and powerful tool. You know, and once you kind of, kind of get into it, it's, uh, you know, and um, it's just very powerful. But, uh yeah, I mean, you know, I think that the 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 levels of 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 entry have changed a lot. You know, I think that uh, especially nowadays, we're going to learn that that because of the quarantine, you know, uh, things that used to take big studios to do are they're all going to be done in their house anyway. You know, people are going to figure ways out how to do it. You know, so I think that there's going to be a lot of uh, uh, big films that are going to come out with like probably pretty sophisticated special effects, you know, done in people's houses. So, you know, I think that is going to be uh, a very um, uh, democratizing kind of, kind of uh, thing, you know, and uh, I, I think that kind of brings me back to like why the, the coronavirus is very existential to me because it kind of changes how we deal with, creating these things and then sharing them, you know, because I think before, uh, for a lot of people creating, creating like a, a comic book or creating a story, whatever it is that they're making, it's to basically get fans, get followers, you know, so that you can continue to produce the thing you're making. Right. So it's this, this very capitalist, kind of kind of mindset you know i think that now i have to question whether that capitalist mindset even works anymore you know like we're about to come into this new world where you know creating this media to you know basically be self-sufficient in a way isn't going to be as uh i guess necessary in a way you know so 
it's definitely something that I've been thinking about a lot. Yeah. And I think that that's a, you know, often when we look at sort of the creative space and how the industry sort of works, I mean, even in like animation, you know, like when I first found out that, oh, cartoons that I grew up watching did not make any money. Like they were pretty much just sinkholes of money and uh, companies would make cartoons just so that they could sell the toys that those cartoons are based off of. Mm-hmm. And and just looking, just like understanding mm-hmm. sort of the, the business mindset or the, the model behind all these things, it really made me sort of step back and be like, well, am I really trying to make a cartoon? Or am I trying to, you know, am I trying to make a cartoon or am I trying to make money in the creative industry? <laughs> because... You know, like it, it, it can be it can be difficult to sort of like balance what you want and what you need to do just to uh just to be successful. Uh yeah, I'm not sure if I if I missed the last part of that. But um uh yeah, you know, I think that definitely um uh yeah, I've just been you know, because before it was like a means to an end almost, you know, and the kind of world that we're gonna be coming into, you know does it still justify it and so like that's something i'm struggling with you know uh uh i think that uh ultimately for me the the comic i'm working on right now uh afrotech the ultimate goal is to sort of have this uh 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 image of the future right you know that and everything I'm I'm working on or thinking about, there's always this image of the future. Believe is we can all come together and say, you know, from now on, we're gonna make sure that everyone has health care, everyone has basic income, everyone has, uh, right? Yeah. You know, uh, as a society, however that turns out is really gonna determine our future. And so we have this level of choice that we have to keep in mind, especially as like a pan African what are we going to do with this very specific time? You know, and I think that the coronavirus has uh, made apparent all the contradictions in uh, capitalism, all the contradictions in racism. We used to do the, the coronavirus as we are. You know, what the real value of those things are. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's just yeah, we're 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 really seeing sort of I'm just really curious to see like what what the new models of success will, will look like uh you know, once all this stuff starts to die down because I mean, at least for like black creators in general, you know, we look at we look at sort of like how influential uh comic conventions have, have been for uh, you know, promoting a lot of work and having that you know avenue gone it's like what is going to be that next uh what is going to be that next sort of platform that is used to uh, help black creators really uh build community around the original stuff that they're working on you know that's really it was uh really disappointing for me because this was the supposed to be the year that i i hit up all the (laughs) the conventions um you know i did i did like two last year uh because it, it, it is pretty disappointing, and honestly, I didn't get too great of an opportunity at the conventions I did make it to, so yeah, um, I was really hoping that some of these other ones, I would be able to make more of an impact. Um, so, yeah, it was really disappointing. Uh, you know, I was really excited for a lot of them, you know, to travel around, you know, so, yeah, you're right. I mean, what what is going to be the forum, you know, and... Uh, you know, realistically, everyone's saying next year that we're going to go back to the regular convention schedule. But in reality, it, it may not be next year, even with a vaccine and everything, you know, uh, how people feel in crowds. I don't think it's going to go back to normal immediately in any sense. So, you know, what what we're going to do in to sort of supplement that convention market, I really don't know. I mean, uh, hopefully it'll be a lot of uh, cool virtual reality. I think that's probably what's going to happen. We're going to put on the headset and go there instead (laughs) of, uh, 
you know, the physical convention, but uh, you know, it's definitely, it's, it's really, it's really sad because um, you know, the only way I was making uh, sales with comic books other than that was actually at a coffee shop called the coup shout out to the coup, but uh, you know, they're, they're obviously not able to sell my comic and I'm pretty sure, you know, you got to think now people are going to be extra germaphobe. Yeah. So they're not going to want to touch anything. Yeah, like you know, just so the whole. That's how conventions like, make. <laughs> that whole tactile experience is going to be, is just going to be, it's going to be different, and, and, yeah, you know, mm-hmm. just the just the whole just the whole idea of, uh, what like thousands of people packing into a warehouse or convention center to, to, you know, have an experience isn't isn't necessarily doesn't really translate, in you know summer 2020 <laughs> like it, it just that's just not a that's just not a thing right now and so uh and so it's it's really yeah i think it, we're, we're kind of in no man's land at this point because we haven't really been through this yeah so uh you know i'm i mean i i think i was really trying hard to increase my sort of uh, uh online footprint anyway you know through different means i mean obviously this is one of them so Thank you for the opportunity. Um, you know, so I guess doing more podcasts, doing more uh, interviews, being seen by more people, you know, other than that, you know, I think it's it's uh, it's really hard to to sell comics in general. Um, I think, interestingly enough, you know, people are more interested when they see you in person. So, you know, uh, when you, when you kind of sell them a story, you talk to them. So, yeah, I think that what, what's going to replace that? I really don't know. Yeah. I mean, at this point it's YouTube videos and stuff really sort of sharing that process, uh, through, you know, vlogging and blogging and, and all those things, because that, that's where people are getting those, you know, those nuanced personal touches, I suppose. Um, is sort of in that space, uh, even though it's kind of one-sided. I mean, it's definitely one-sided. But, uh, but you know, places like Reddit, places like, um, you know, Instagram and Facebook, uh, it, it, it becomes a, yeah, just, you know, for, for, for somebody that's trying to disconnect from the internet, this is probably the worst time to try to do that. <laughs> yeah, I think, I think you cut off for a second. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. So I was I was saying that um, you know, this is this is probably the worst it's probably the worst time for somebody to want to try to disconnect from the internet because this is this is really <laughs> what we have right now. You know, in terms of uh right, right, right. in terms of being able to connect with people, being able to promote stuff. Um, you know, mm-hmm. it, it it's it's tough. And so, you know, for for you, like uh, you know, again I, I really appreciate you being on the podcast and and sort of like sharing a little bit about what you do and everything and really just curious like what what do you have kind of coming down the pipeline you know with uh with your work or with works that you're probably doing with the uh, with other projects with other people um are there any things that you're excited about uh, yeah uh yeah so uh i'm uh finally uh finishing the the third issue in my uh my comic book series afrotech um, and, uh, yeah, I mean, you know, I think that's the major thing I've been working on trying to finish. Uh, unfortunately I, I work on this project alone. So, you know, it, it, it takes me a little bit of time, you know, to, to push it out, which is once again, why it's good that I guess Corona is forcing me to stay at home and, and get it done. Um, so yeah, Afrotech, the comic, um, I think after that is finished, then uh, I'm going to start working on two other uh, projects that I, I've, I've had going for a few years, which is uh, Thoughts of a Colonized Mind and Age of the Terranaut. And all of them are sort of like, uh, like I said before, uh, comic books with the accompanying art or, or media of some kind. And uh, yeah, I mean, you can check out my uh, Instagram, uh, Samuel underscore walker underscore art uh i also have one for the comic book which is afrotech comic uh 
at Instagram and uh, uh, also my website, uh, afrotechcomic.com. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And we'll we'll definitely try to uh, we'll definitely try to do our best to promote that and and plug it in the different areas that we can. And you know, it's just it's just really good to and exciting to to talk to somebody that's taking such a you know such a multi pronged approach with the storytelling and just using just a variety of tools and and really acknowledging that we have a lot of stuff that's available for free, you know, or that we don't have to pay for upfront you know and uh right and i think you know just kind of utilizing that and and staying up to date with sort of the industry uh and in some ways being ahead of the industry in 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 some aspects uh you know that that's kind of a you know it's a blueprint for success and it's just a matter of seeing seeing it all the way through and and sort of reaping the benefits from it and so you know i i really i i'm always like uh excited and happy to to hear people are doing that because that that for me is one of the things that like i often try to do yeah thank you you know uh yeah keep it up man yeah and so uh again you know thanks for the time thanks for uh agreeing to hop on the podcast and and sharing you know the things that you're doing and, and the things that you're pushing out and we'll we'll definitely be in contact and and really just staying up to date with what you're doing because uh you know it's just really exciting and so, uh, and so if there's anything else you want to plug, feel free to now. Uh, no, I think that's it. Thank you. Thank you for having me on. Oh yeah, for sure. For sure. And, uh, and yeah, we'll, we'll call it a wrap from there, you know? And All right. awesome. And so, uh, yeah, you know, I, uh, thanks for your time and everything. And I'll let you know when this, uh, when we post this and, um, and yeah, yeah. You know, hopefully, hopefully this helps, uh, sort of you know, get your work out there and, and, you know, start to, you know, get some more eyes on it and everything and start to build community around it. Cause I think this is a, this is kind of the name of the game now. <laughs> right, right, right. And yeah, thank you. Cause I mean, you know, this is my first uh, podcast. So, uh, you know, I definitely want to try it more. Oh yeah, so, for sure. Yeah. And I think, uh, I think it's definitely a good opportunity to, uh, to, you know, like looking into like YouTubing and, uh, and podcasting to just, you know, kind of share your, share your journey and, uh, share sort of like your creative, your creative flow, because, uh, you know, that, uh, you know, me being in that space, it's definitely sort of helped build a, build a fan base, uh, just by me, just like sharing the stuff that I do. Mm. Yeah. You know, and I I think for me, just, uh, that's always been a, a big struggle for me is sort of, uh, putting myself the creator out there yeah you know in any kind of but uh you know i think definitely as a as a older artist that's the thing that i'm learning that i really should have been doing from the from the beginning you know because uh i guess in a way as an artist you for some people you don't want to be judged by me i want to be judged by the stuff i'm creating you know but uh, at the end of the day, a lot of people still need to hear and see that that sort of uh, story. They need to hear your voice. They need to know what you're thinking and what went into creating this art also. And, um, you know, I, just for me, as late in life, learning this this uh, important lesson about oh, putting yeah. yourself out there. Yeah. You know, yeah. To be seen. It's it. You'll, yeah. It's just one of those things of like you can't separate the art from the artist. It's just, it's just, it's really difficult uh, because there's this, there's this personal element from the artist that you get in the art that, uh, that is just always recognizable um, once you're aware of who the artist is. And so it's, <laughs> you know, it's a, uh, just like, you'll always know, you'll know a Michael Bay film when you see it, <laughs> you know, <laughs> like you'll know a Michael Bay film when you see it. And and I think that kind of just speaks true to a lot of different things in the creative industry, uh, because you know of just what the roots are for for creativity, and so uh, you know yeah you know I just you know I, I wish you the you know the best of luck and uh, stay safe and stay healthy and and we'll we'll definitely be in contact uh, you know uh, closer to when this drops. Okay, thank you. Same to you. Oh yeah, have a good one. And there we have it. 
That is another episode of the Black Superheroes Matter podcast in the wraps. Again, the purpose of this podcast is for people to get exposed to a variety of different things that black people are creating in the arts and entertainment industry. The goal is for this podcast to bring light to all those and those creators because as a community we have the opportunity to skirt some of the problems that we've seen in this day and age when it comes to expressing blackness. And so if you love this, definitely check out the more work that we're doing. Go to at Black Superheroes Matter, or you can go to BlackSuperheroesMatter.com to check out the blog and the write-ups that we do on these guests. And if you're so inclined, feel free to support my work at Iltopia, where we have the Black Superheroes Matter art book, the Black Superheroes Matter sticker packs, and even coloring books, activity guides. And so if you want to check that stuff out, check it out at shop.iltopia.com. It's all black owned. I might add, they're all handmade products and they're all made with love for the community that has really given me the opportunity to find my place in this world. And so again, thank you for another wonderful episode. Thank you for listening. Feel free to follow all the stuff that Black Superheroes Matter is cranking out and excited to share another wonderful guest with you on next episode. So without further ado, thank you very much.